it's lovely to be here today with Jason Hughes from Sky Media to talk about the future of branded content, which you've got a lot of strong opinions on. What do you think is going to be the main trends in that field in the next year? I think certainly for us and going forward, it will be how you can transcend what people will see as maybe sort of traditional content on screen, on TV, uh, on VOD, on those platforms, and then how you really tie that in with social and get that real-time interaction. What do you think would be big areas of investment? Do you think there's going to be any surprising areas of investment over the next year? And to me, I mean, certainly from, from our point of view, we, we look at genres and, and themes. So there's definitely a, a much broader space around storytelling and what can happen in, in those sort of markets. And we've, we've done that with how we worked with uh, John Lewis and their Christmas ad and how we could sort of look at additional content uh, around that. Uh, I think there's definitely broader themes around uh, global dramas and global scripted and how you can create spin-offs of those types of shows. And then sport, uh, sport, fantastic opportunities in sport. And we've done a lot in that space. And then the, you know, those other opportunities around news that aren't necessarily, you know, from a buzz BuzzFeed perspective, but what's maybe the broader spectrum in that space. With that in mind, with the way in which branded content's moving, do you think there's different skill set that's required from people working in it? It's an interesting one. I, without getting um, you know, sound too much like a marketeer, which I've never professed to be. It's a bit like a it's a bit like a Venn diagram. I think what you've got you've got a lot of great commercial experience. So people who understand how to cut quick, short, impactful commercial content, mm. and then you've got these brilliant editors, exec producers, directors, storytellers who understand what makes compelling content in the traditional sense. And I think what there needs to be almost is a little bit of a transition of a shared skill set because you've got one skill set who know how to do one thing and specialise in one thing very, very well and the same on the other side, especially in a post-production edited world. And I think if you can get those two worlds sharing experiences and ideas, because what you're trying to do is effectively create short, impactful content yeah. that's shareable. Um, and where you go from two ends of the spectrum there, you've got beautifully made excellent high-end content that lives in an editorial world and you've got always the very high-end impactful brilliant commercials of old that used to sit in the 70s and 80s on tv that used to resonate brilliantly for brands what you need to do is have a little bit more of that that space working towards each other to, to gain that that perfect space in the middle what's about looking at mediums what type of mediums of branded content do you think advertisers are most attracted to at the moment it's an interesting one i think there's always been you know, a, a very sort of, maybe it's a metropolitan bubble that always says digital is best, digital's first, everything's great, everything's shareable. I think I think you need to also think broader and think who your audience are, what do they do and what do they engage with. TV for me is still a brilliant platform. It is the, probably the most engaging platform that there is, but how does TV then live with those digital and social platforms? I think that's where it becomes most powerful and most impactful and certainly on anything we've done, what we found on on anything, you know, recently we've we've done a partnership with um, with Carling, and previous to that, Budweiser. It's not all beers that we work with, but and it, and it's both been around in football. But what we found is that TV will give it the fame, the push, and the experience. Platforms such as Facebook, Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter, and a, and a broader spectrum create a brilliant space to then allow that interaction and, and, and that engagement with the audience. So it, it, it's a joint market, but I think the one thing that TV can give you is the engagement. Okay, and obviously new emerging platforms like VR and AR, do you think they're going to come to their own this year? Um, I think this is definitely a year of growth. Um, interestingly, I had a conversation with our, our head of VR um, this morning. Um, I think the, the view from this is the, the technology around goggles or, or viewing headsets, um, you know, beyond the sort of Google Cardboard, that has to get better and that has to improve. Um, it's a bit like what 3D was like at the start and I think probably didn't take off because of the barrier to entry around the glasses. I think VR is in a very different place as is as is AR. If you think where VR is at and some of the brilliant work the New York Times have, have done in that space, um, even with the initial giveaway at the start, has been great and a really great space. It's, it's proper engaging 360 uh, content. Where it needs to move to, and you've got this more AR model with the likes of Pokemon, for example, is, is to try and get those barriers to entry down and get that growth in the market. 
um, but they're both really compelling, engaging platforms. I think it just needs a little bit less barriers to entry and a little bit more development work to make it more user friendly for the mass market. Another platform that's interesting to watch is the on-demand video space. Do you think that will be something that people will kind of work out new ways around this year? I think so. Um, and again, uh, talking in, in current experience of the work we've done, um, we have had three examples where we've used the on-demand platform. Um, we've worked with Volvo on human-made stories, um, which again was short-form branded content, and we worked in partnership with Sky Atlantic, one of our premium channels around that, um, to get the right space between you know what a, what a brand was doing with their brand objectives and what a, a channel a broadcaster was doing. Um, we've also looked at how, again, I've touched on this before with uh, John Lewis and their Christmas um, ad and, and how we, we sort of heroed it. And I think that, interestingly and anecdotally, the, the feedback that comes from consumers is it's brilliant to actually be able to w watch that on a TV screen and engage with it. We, we know that it's there on YouTube and we can do that. And the great thing that YouTube has is I can just do that on my mobile phone on the way to work. And that's perfect. But if I want to sit down engage with the kids and pause it on the big screen and do things, then I can do that through VOD. And I think regardless of who you are, the VOD platform brings those opportunities uh, for branded content. What do you think will be the conversations that we'll be talking about, you know, kind of towards the end of this year? I, I think it's still very much an evolution and an evolving process. There are so many brilliant platforms out there. And it, for a marketeer, it must be so confusing to go, well, what one's the best for me? Just tell me what I want to know and what I want to do. And I think ultimately our job as media owners or in the branded content industry is to continue an education piece and an evolution piece. You've got to you've got to go through a test and learn phase. And I think what you need out there also are brave brands who are prepared to invest and commit to that spend to allow you to go on that journey with those case studies. I don't think it's all directly through one media owner. I think it's a partnership of a lot of different media owners where a core idea can live. It's still got to be credible. But I also think that data and targeting, and again, that's something we've done through the likes of AdSmart and Advance and those sort of targeted platforms, you can do storytelling and you can do that as, a, as an evolving piece where you can sort of pick up and retarget and, and actually get compelling storytelling told to audiences. Brilliant. Well, it's lovely to talk to you and looking forward to see what happens over the next year. Thanks very much.